Hello, welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I still love The Dead Don't Die. And I'm Gary. And today we're going to review and discuss Final Destination 3. Written by Glenn Morgan and James Wong and directed by James Wong. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis? Well, six years after the first movie, we follow Mary Elizabeth Winstead's character, Wendy, who has just watched all of her friends die in a fairground accident. She then realizes that some of the pictures she took that night may contain clues about some of the survivors' demises. You may never return from Devil's Plane. <laughs> So this film kind of breaks the tradition of the other two films with its really? opening. I mean, it still has a very stylized introduction with mm -hmm. the creepy music playing, the oh, names yeah. appearing, yeah. and lots of foreshadowing of the deaths. But it's not in a bedroom this time. No, no, it's outside. <laughs> it's yeah. literally at the fairground where the film immediately launches us into. It's like... You know the first film, it took its time, it yeah. built up the world, the characters, and the uh, anticipation of yes. something going wrong. Yeah. It's like, they, the, the filmmakers know that you've now come to this film after seeing the other two, and you want to see brutal, gory, violent death. Oh yeah, you know what's going to happen. Exactly, so this film just rushes headlong into that first major accident because they know you're anticipating it yeah and so we get very very little characterization well i mean i forgot this movie entirely other than that it was well i kept thinking it was a theme park ride right but it's not it's a fairground ride yeah it's like so, a carnival so uh, yeah but like i said I, I i thought i was onto something when i walked into this film thinking yeah i've seen final destination 3 and then when i got there i'm like yeah, it's like, rush, rush, rush. We're already there at the fairground. It's already set up. You know, we've got Kevin and Jason. You know, we've got Wendy and we've got Carrie. And we've got this, you know, group of friends at this fairground. And I'm like, okay, we've got a bit of a setup. But then it's it's telling us, you know, it's the end of their, their school year. You know, they're all going to be going off to colleges soon. And here's Mary Elizabeth Winstead's sister, you know, who, you know, she takes a picture of. And that will become really, like, big as the film goes on, that camera. But it's kind of hammering in the background the the looming presence. Oh, of course. <laughs> you know, Wendy's walking around and everything she looks at is freaking her out. You know, she, she goes on about having to be a control freak. Right. So when they get to the ride, and I thought, okay, well, we're, we're already here. Okay, yeah, we're already getting onto the ride. You know, I, I know after the last two movies, we're going into the flashback sequence. But at the same time, I'm still not feeling, I'm not feeling Alex from the first one. I'm not even feeling the girl driving up the highway. I'm just getting on the ride with her. Exactly. You know? We've got no experience with these characters. We've yeah. literally only had a few moments of dialogue and her getting upset about losing control and her boyfriend just like, oh, you, you know, it's, that's why you're afraid. But it was just the fact that this film just went ominous, foreshadowing, like it smacked you across the, off, across the face both times, you yeah, know? Yeah. And it was just like, oh, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. You know, you've got devil's flight is the name of the <laughs> roller coaster. It's Tony Todd, Tony Todd voicing the devil. And, you know, and, and the other thing about this this film is, like, it, in, in the original film, there's maybe, you know, it's Carter, who's the bit of the dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but, yeah. You, but all the characters are pretty much likable. This film, you have the, the ditzy kind of hot girls that, you know, oh, they're, ju they're the just... Ashley and Ashleen. They're just, you know, they're vacuous, you mm -hmm. know? There's nothing to them. You've got... You've got was it the one of the lead characters who does the underskirt photo? Oh yeah, Kevin. That's and the, the main guy. And, and like, then you've got the other guy who's going around with a camera, like flash your tits. Frankie. Come on, Frankie. Yeah, yeah. I, I I know these names because as the film goes on and you watch them die, I was like, who the fuck was that? Oh, right. Okay, yeah. That that that's him. That's him there. But it just made none of these characters really likable, except you know for for our lead. Yeah. Yeah, um, which, which is fine. At least you've got somebody to root for. But that was when my brain just went, "Oh no!" They like they have designed this film so that you hate the characters, so that you root for them to die. I was like, that 
is is fine on a superficial level, but it just yeah. means I'm not going to get invested. I'm not going to care. All I'm going to be excited for is, is is the elaborate traps. Well, I also thought as well. I mean, as we get into the theme park, you know, as they get onto the ride and and the the boyfriend and Carrie go at the front. Did you recognise the actress playing Carrie? No. She was the waitress from Alien vs Predator Requiem. Ugh. I know. I just I just thought I'd throw that out there. Um, but they, the, you know. The, the boyfriend and girlfriend go at the front and, you know, Wendy, Mary Elizabeth Winslow's character, and Kevin go at the back. Because, uh, you know, she, she will completely freak out. I'm like, girl, I wouldn't even let you on this ride. You are just completely unhinged. I would not want to sit next to you. But luckily they pull those kids off as well because that would have been bad. But the ride goes off. You've seen all of the domino effects in place. You know, like the guy drops his camera, which as the as the ride hits it, it's already lost its brake fluid, which allows all the seat. Wasn't it brake fluid? Fire. It was yeah, the the harness. Yeah, the harness yeah, the fluid. Hydraulics. Sorry, yeah, the hydraulic fluid. You know, everything. I I know what's coming. You know, and I, I'm really rooting for it. I'm I'm thinking, God, I hate theme park roller coaster fairground rides. You know, loop the loops, and why the hell would you want to go upside down at sixty miles per hour? Oh my God, the thrill and all that. And then I didn't see anybody die. Like, I was really surprised. People were falling out of the roller coaster. You don't see their bodies impact. You know, you may see, like, one guy get impaled. Yeah, it's uh, Kevin, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I but, mean, that that's pretty gruesome. I mean, well, you see... Um... But my brain was already set up that it was going to be massively over the top. Like, I thought the goth guy and his girlfriend they, were going to get decapitated fall. and yeah. stuff. They just, they just fall. No, but you see one guy, you know, his harness comes up, so he flies out. Kevin grabs hold of him, and he goes flying off. He gets his back broken on one of the supports. Yeah. His shoe flies off, which hits the rail. Um, and it looks like his shoe hitting the rail broke it. But no, you can see that the track was already loose before yeah, it yeah, even yeah, hit yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know, the guy being split in half, I thought was a pretty cool effect. Well, my brain's already telling me now that it's a flashback. Well, absolutely, yeah. You know, and we're back. Well, it's on, not a flashback, it's a premonition. Well, premonition, yeah. We, we've, we've now come back to uh, Wendy freaking out because that's what she's just seen. Yeah. Now, I also just want to go into, like, the reality of roller coasters because I love roller coasters have been on many across the world yeah uh, it's such a thrill um but roller coasters are incredibly safe like they yeah. really are and the way this film depicts them it's like you're you're getting on a mine cart you know yeah with no safety features whatsoever like harnesses don't traditionally at all use liquid you know uh, there's many more supports and bolts and things that would hold them together. Like wheels are checked every day. You know, there's so many things in this film that makes you deliberately afraid of going on a roller coaster, which no. is really um, kind of unfounded. Not in the Final Destination world, man. But it's, every it, bolt but and screw here, here's can the fly. Thing, here's also the thing. Yeah, okay, so yeah, we can just go, oh, it's Death's hand doing it. He's <laughs> manipulating it so that it's worse than it really is. Yeah. But this premonition also shows... Uh, that it was his his harness being forced down, which caused the leak. He's now no longer on the roller coaster. Mm -hmm. The guy whose camera falls, mm -hmm. which causes some of the sparks and wheels to fly off the roller coaster. Yeah, he's no longer on the roller coaster. Yes, and those were the two kind of major factors in the roller coaster having this horrible accident. And then we watched roller coaster go off, and, and it has a horrible accident. And two you're like, seconds later, you yeah. know, like so it happened sooner. Well, it then was, it should have done. I was just like, there's not much thought being put into this. I, well, in fairness, I mean, just look at the first one, you know, like we said with the first and second one. Without the person actually being there, it does affect the whole plan, but doesn't actually change the outcome of what's actually going to happen to the vehicle. Like in the first one, the plane still exploded, even with Alex off. You know, well, it was always going to. Yeah, it was always. Yep, yeah, that's what I mean. It was always going to. The, the truck already let go of its logs without the red car on the rail on the road so the ride was going to crash without the hang camera or the um harness but it happened so quick as well yeah like i don't know how long it took i mean I, in my brain i said hey it took them t 10 minutes to walk down from the ride to the exit and then they go flying off but then it just cuts to s school you know and wendy is finishing up her term and she goes to her locker which she's still got you know, tributes to her dead boyfriend too. And yeah, I'm right back. Like you said, I'm right back to, oh yeah, they're school kids. I don't care. 
they're all getting ready to die and when she, as she's walking through the school she meets up with Kevin who obviously lost his girlfriend because he was sat next to Wendy at the back and got off uh, instead of his girlfriend and he's broken hearted because he was going to marry her but she was going to dump him so you know it was going to completely change his life and I'm like I don't care Kevin I'm honestly trying to remember how you die but there's a plan so we have to follow everybody else and as she walks past that group I mean like, she's getting absolutely soaked in the rain. You know, she's so upset. She's got her own cloud over her head. And everybody else is under this little umbrella. And they walk up to her. Uh, uh, Ashley and Ashleen walk up to her. And they're like, oh, yeah, you know, we're really sorry about what's happened. And I'm thinking, how long's it been? Like, remember in the first one, you know, there was a, what, a couple of... They, they had the funeral, didn't they? And yeah. then they, a couple of weeks later, they had a memoriam. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm... This one's kind of the same. Death's just fucking around. I'm going to wait three weeks. Well, the thing is, you can kind of... Yeah, I don't know how long it's been. Because in, in, in the, at the fairground, she's kind of like, oh, I need to take these pictures for the yearbook. Mm -hmm. After the accident, the very next scene, everybody's got their yearbooks and are signing them, and etc. So it's like, yeah, it's an unknown amount of time. Yeah. But the film might suggest you it's the very next blimmin' day. I, I don't it, know. It's, I think it's like like we said with the first one, they had a couple of time jumps. So they're like, oh, people don't mind don't mind time jumps. They'll just carry on. And they just want to get you to the next death sequence in this film. Yeah. And we do because then we follow those two girls to go off. Yeah, the, t the tanning booths because yeah. they want to get um, tanned up for, for the school dance. Right. And we also have the whole introduction of Wendy's sister, you know, and the film kind of plays on this a lot. And if you've seen the film more than once, you immediately know that she is part. She's integral to the story. Nobody else is actually involved. Everybody who's involved in the story is probably going to die at some point. And I'm sat there and I'm like, I remember the first one when Alex was doing kind of his researching and his looking into the things and how his premonition worked. He actually, you know, had felt death. We felt death was behind him at certain points. You could feel it in the film. I don't feel it with Wendy's character in this. No. Like... She only ever seems to have these things happen either just before it happens, before the death happens, or when she's looking at her camera and she's checking her camera out at home and her sister wants to borrow it. And they have this little heartwarming moment because at the beginning you're supposed to think that they hate each other. And she's flicking through the pictures and she realizes that certain particular pictures look like the way they died. Like her boyfriend was stood next to a roller coaster, so he died on a roller coaster. <laughs> These two girls are stood in front of a, a really bright light, so something really bright and hot is gonna burn them. And you get to the tannin booth, and you're like, "Ah, oh, yeah, ah, oh, yeah, I see what yeah. you're saying there." That's what I mean about the foreshadowing in this film just being blatant. Yeah, it's in your face. Yeah. And so you you just you know, okay, we see them in the tanning station. We know they're gonna die there. And then we we watch the the events unfold where we see the the, the shelf that's above the salon coming coming loose <laughs> off the shelf and uh, <laughs> you know and, and again, you know I mean this whole sequence just feels wrong in, in the first place it feels like film world because yeah. no tanning station has two two of them in the same room it's a very private thing who the fuck uses tanning lotion as a doorstop right. <laughs> Um, but then we, you know, the girls at, at the carnival, they won like a giant inflatable, like palm tree. Yeah. And there's one in the tanning station as uh -huh. well, which is what falls over because oh, of, yeah. you know, the chain events, which causes the shelf to come loose and pins them both inside. Oh, and I suppose the squirting of the water in the, the clown's mouth kind of yeah. represents her drinking Can the drink and being like, eh, and... Or whatever, yeah. But it's a lot of, yeah, you're right. There are a lot of blatant domino effects. But it's it's cool. I like it. You know, I always have because, I mean, I don't know. Actually, no, I think I'll change that. I don't now because the, none of the characters, yeah, you don't like. You don't have any backstory for. So when they die, I'm just like, oh, they're dead next. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I just, just thought of that. I always kind of like this I film. mean, don't get me wrong, it's still... Absolutely horrific, and I would never want that to happen to anybody. Oh, totally. But when you're watching the film and you go, these characters are vapid, you know, they're, they're non-characters. The special effects are brilliant. I mean, you know, once we have the, the, you know, the domino effect of everything locking the lids down on the girls and hearing them scream, and you can see, you know, the plastic uh, eye covers that they have kind of melting their skin, and you know, you can feel it, that they can't touch the glass because it's too hot, and the glass is shattered, so they've got glass inside them, and it's not turning off, it's just 
you know, it just bursts into flame. I'm like, oh man, that really hurts. Next. Also, just again, in reality, the, I mean, I've never been in one, but they all have on-off switches inside. Like, yeah, and <laughs> so, competent and staff. And when you, when you know that, you're just like, like, so why didn't they? And I'm like, oh, like, I'm guessing death just kept turning it back on I every time they tried. I know there's an Asian world, dude. It's like it, American Pie world. Exactly, and it's just... But we follow, obviously, Wendy and Kevin hooking up. Kev, I really like the fact that Kevin has been researching the first and second movies. Because there's a picture. Wendy's camera is massively integral to the story, which I think is kind of stupid. But at the same time, for any newcomer, Final Destination watcher, it's very easy to follow. You know, she took all these pictures that night at the, um, at the fairground. And so anybody that, anybody that survived the actual ride, it's going to show their death, which is brilliant, you know? And so they're... So he finds um research on the first movie and alex you know and what happened to all those people and then she finds the picture of the car wreck and says look at the number on the highway and it says 180 and you're like and i i, I remember sitting there for, in the third watching this for the first time thinking that's brilliant i love a movie going back and keeping the continuity it, at least in this one they kept it brief compared to the yeah. second one well they do because they also because they like to keep kind of keep the spotlight on the camera on the photos you know because kevin keeps talking about how he doesn't really want to see his photo because he doesn't want to know how he wants to die but maybe they should at least keep it in mind and on top of that they're trying to work out who the person was sitting in front of them um, which, spoilers, it's her sister. <laughs> you know, because nobody else is spoken to in this whole movie. There are no cops. There are no parents. You know, there's nobody. It, it's The focus is on Mary Elizabeth Winstead, Kevin, and anybody they come in contact with who dies. Yeah. Well, now they uh, decide, after all that heavy research, they need to go and get some fast food. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, because they need to find Frankie. He was next. Yeah, and uh, and they, they drive into this drive through and uh, there's a car in front of them, there's a car behind them, Yeah. and then you see a van kind of reversing into the side of them. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed what that van was. No. But it was the pale ale Hace or heiss van from the second movie, the uh... Please Drink Responsibly van. Nice. <laughs> that nice. That pins them in there. I was like, oh, clearly that, that driver was drunk again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then they see the truck in the, in the background with its brakes you know, loose and it's, it's, you know, careening right towards them. I mean, it's blatantly obvious because, you know, Mary Elizabeth Winstead has this whole, oh, I sense death all around me moment. My spider sense is tingling while Kevin is just like annoyed that the guy behind him is honking his horn and you see the truck coming down. But they're still trying to work out this picture of Frankie and where he would be on a ladder. And like, I, it is a cool death. <laughs> it's stupid yeah. like the the van hits them at the back you know they smash out of the of the windshield yeah and uh and and the van hits them and the engine goes flying out of it <laughs> yeah. i was like that's stupid yes i'm like okay so i'm guessing death just severed everything that made this engine function he didn't need to to was, launch it out of the vehicle it was already faultingly attached that morning he just nudged the truck in one direction and everything else has happened because it just happens that Frankie is sat in his car in front of Wendy and Kevin. And so the engine has flown out and hit the back of his head and just spun his brain out. Which I think is cool, you know. Yeah, it's a I cool, mean, gory effect, but it's still stupid. you, you got to think of the thought, because they now look at the picture and they're like, well, the pictures must be false. And they find the picture that Kevin took underneath the girl's skirt, which shows a fan behind Frankie's head. And you're like, oh, okay. So, Wendy and Kevin have to f catch up with Lewis, who is your, uh, like, I thought he was a footballer. He is, yeah, he's a jock. But yeah, he's just like your atypical jock. Uh, we find out that he's, you know, training at this camp and that the name of the camp just harkens into the fact that there are some swords in his pictures. The Sultans. The yeah. Sultans. And so they, they, you know, they have swords as well. So it all works out and they get there. And the gym is very fucking blatant. Like I had to research Lewis because, you know, I saw him die in the roller coaster accident and I thought he'd actually stayed on there. Like I don't, I, I. I think I blanked out that the fact that two of them had a fight and got off, but like 
seeing the fact that he he because he doesn't really turn up until we get to told we have to go to the gym so i'm like oh it's him who's he oh right this is that dude and just then everything is in place you know wendy's looking around like my spider sense is tingling the swords are shaking the weights are loosening there's a man over there wearing a big black cape and carrying a scythe yeah. You know? Oh, there's a wa there's water leaking from the fountain, and there's a CD player that almost fell into it. But she does and says nothing. Yeah, yeah. She's, I was gonna say that. Yeah. It's like at least in the in the previous films, the characters tried to prevent those accidents from happening. In yeah. this one, she just stands there with her with her pictures. Kevin, look, so timid. Kevin, look, the swords are up there, and, the, and the, they're rattling. And the weights are over there, and and. Lewis is just giving it more and more shit, more and more about the Doesn't fact that he's believe it. not yeah. going to die. And I've got to, I really love the little introduction of the music in the background. Right. Like I kept expecting John Denver, which but no, was it's a funny, new song. But it's a new song, you know, for the Tanning Girls, it was Roller Coaster of Love. You know, um, I, I can't remember what this one was, but it's, it's like turn around, <laughs> it's walking behind you. There is some. <laughs> but when the blades come down and they just miss him, it's like, whoo, I can't die. And I'm like, wait for it. I'm immortal. Wait for it. Ah, and then it. I'm like, I've never seen a weight machine that's built that way either. I mean, that, that, that entire weight machine was designed to kill him. Like, the, it doesn't exist in reality. Yeah, well, I mean, no, it's, it, I think it, he pulls the bars up and the weights are behind him, but the blades had sliced the wire, so now the blades... But also, swords cannot in. cut through steel wire Yeah, either. I know, the swords just, were okay, definitely so not in the right did position. It. Death did it. <laughs> yeah, death did it. And I love the fact, now, this is the point where I was kind of thinking, okay, this movie is a bit silly, and I started to really notice while reviewing it the... The, you know, the subtle hints were completely out the window and I kind of missed Alex from the first one. But when they start to go after Ian and Aaron, now, Wendy and Kevin have been present for two deaths. Well, they got arrested. They spent 10 hours in jail. What, both those times? No, just this, uh, after... Um... After Ian and yeah. Aaron. Yeah, because we, we, we follow them to Ian and Aaron at the uh, uh, Walmart or the supermarket or wherever these guys are working. The hardware store, yeah. The hardware store, which is obviously just filled with... Many, many implements of death. And they've got, again, the Where's Wally picture of death. And they're like, oh, look, you know, the signs up there, it says kill. So those represent that. And she's obviously got her hand and he's got a gun. So he's going to shoot her with something. And Ian's just driving around in the top of this fucking forklift. Like, oh, I don't care, man. Me and, me and Aaron are in love. Aaron kind of looks like she's in on it. But I haven't known her character for very long to know if she's being sarcastic or not. I'm just kind of waiting for the death and when it comes i mean they rescue ian yeah they manage to push Ian out of the way all the is, fencing looks about to fall on him yeah which is now your 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 big you know oh death has jumped me moment like in the first second one um but erin is oh well you know part of the thing it causes the chain reaction which causes the um the the, the sawdust bag to explode, which yeah. gets in her face, so she falls backwards uh, into the nail, nail gun, gun, which blasts her like 13 times or so. Yeah. It's basically the bride of Pinhead right now. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. It's it's a very disturbing death. It's just the repeated noise of the nail gun going and going and going. But, <laughs> but it's at this point after that we see Wendy come out of the police station, you know, and I'm like, Oh, oh, right, yeah, there's cops in this one because they've been, you know, she was in the gym. You know, they got blood splattered on their face. And what happens after the gym? They just walk out with their clothes in a bag and go, we need to find Ian and Aaron. I'm like, no, you don't. Stop going to people. Stop going to people with their pictures because you're killing them. You know, just leave them alone. But they come out of the, the police station and she researches into her own photo and realizes that, you know, she's got McKinley written on her top which is the exact same name as Ian's character because he's related to the town uh, somehow, don't know. Um, and obviously he's pissed off that his girlfriend died. So he's going to kill Wendy. Yeah, it's not really explored very well no, in the script. Like, it's, it's just like, like, oh, it's kind of different that it's not death has manipulated him to become a murderer. But like you said about the deaths, the, 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 the actual deaths, the logic has gone, you yeah. know, like, why isn't this guy 
asking Wendy, you know, about how they can investigate it. That would make another half hour. But no, we've now got to catch up. And Wendy looks at the photo and realizes that the picture of the person who's in front of her that she's been trying to solve all the way through the movie is her sister because they've got uh, the same bracelet on that they've argued over. And they need to work out who the girl is who's been sat next to her sister. So she races to this bicentennial town fireworks. Fourth of July event. Yeah, yeah. The Fourth of July event. And he's like, uh, Kevin rings her and says, oh yeah, I'll look for your sister. Can you maybe look at my picture now and tell me how I'm going to die? Because I'm not feeling happy being outside. And she says, oh, it's like something bright's going off your face. It's just such a stupid picture. But he just happens to turn around and goes, or fireworks? Yeah, yeah, that could be it. Yeah, stay away from fireworks. Thanks, Mary Elizabeth Winstead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, we see one of the uh, the guys dressed in the colonial uniform put his put his thing down, and it, it falls over and knocks one of the cannonballs over, which rolls over and takes the support away from the fireworks stand. Yeah. Um, um, but then get the horse. The horse is getting yeah, scared. Yeah, then the horse gets scared, scared because the of the fireworks and goes running after. Ends up catching uh, Wendy's sister and drags her around. Kevin ends up grabbing a sword and cuts her free. I'm like, yeah, all the stunt work was really good. She was a very good screamer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's been um, up and this you, whole you, ending as well, yeah. which is cool. Ian turns up uh, and he's just like, Wendy, it's all your fault. Ah, I'm gonna kill you now. Yeah, well, we've well, we've just had. Um, Wendy's sister's friend die so she's out of the equation they death has jumped Wendy's sister and they've managed to save Kevin who's only been partially blinded by fireworks and so death has jumped like three people and then McKinley turns up and he's like ah I'm immortal you can't you can't kill me it's gonna jump back to you again and I'm like oh dude you're so fucking dead squash you know I've followed two of the movies up to now I know that Nobody really should survive. The cycle just goes around and around. But and around. when it jumps five months, I'm like, oh, really? Like it's repeating the first film again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like now, coincidentally, you are all on the same train station, subway station together. Yeah, it's that coincidence again. Yeah, it's like, oh, fancy seeing you. Oh, fancy seeing you here. Oh, wait a minute. I sense death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we do go through a quite a cool premonition where she we see the train crash and she gets ripped up and everything's just... We watch Kevin have a pretty gruesome death as oh, he falls on the glass yeah. and then gets dragged between wedged the between the, the train and the wall. Oh, that was, that was quite nasty. And then, yeah, I mean, Wendy is left on the track as the train comes round and just rams her in the head. And when it cuts back, I mean, ending on that effect of the light changing yeah. and just fading out, yeah, pretty cool, but five well, months, really. Death. Well, the whole thing with this ending was the original. You know, the original ending was after they're they're at the you know the celebration. Yeah. And and uh, Ian's just died, and they're walking away, and she throws her camera, kind of stomps it into the ground. Oh, nice. Yeah. And uh, and so they walk off off frame, and the and the the camera pans into the camera, mm -hmm. and then the lens comes out and flashes at at the you know at our camera. Oh, right. So okay. it's almost like. The camera's taking a picture of us, the audience. So now we're on death's list because now, you know, it's a, it's a nod and a wink. It's just saying we're all going to die at some point, you know? Oh, I don't know which one I prefer, actually. But obviously the uh, the test screenings didn't do very well. Mm -hmm. uh, audiences were just like, you know, you, those characters walked off. We don't know whether they're going to live, whether they're going to die. You know, we didn't really like yeah. the nod and the wink yeah. that, that death was still around. Um, and so it was... I think it was five months later yeah. they managed to get the cast back together to film that subway sequence. And Glenn Morgan, one of the writers for this film, said yeah. he really didn't want to do this. He said it just, he said it's ugly, then it's nasty, and it shows the state of mind of America at the time that they decided to kill them all. Yeah. And he said it was really vulgar, and he said it goes against his wishes to, to kill all these teens off because yeah. he felt like these ones deserve to live. Yeah. Uh, but the studio and the audience was like, no, kill them all, kill them all. So him and James Wong decided, they're like, okay, we will kill them all in another premonition because he's like, that, that's a new idea. Yes. Is to have the ending of your film as dramatic as the beginning. Yes. Because he said... 
Final Destination 1 teeters down at the end. Final Destination 2 winds down at the end. Yeah, yeah. Let's go out with a bang. Yeah. But he also said, with the premonition, you know, the film ends before we actually get to see the wreckage. Yes. Which leaves it open. He's like, and so in that way, in your mind's eye, you can headcanon that they lived or you can headcanon that they all died. So he kind of satiates both audiences, mm. which is kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, because um, she could have got him off out, off the train, actually. Yes. After she's seen the premonition. Yeah, you know? and, start, and start the whole cycle over again. And or she just accepted their fate at that point because the doors were closed and she couldn't open them. But if you're making <laughs> another movie after this one, yes. you could just nod in and say, well, I was going to get on a subway train one day, but yeah. it crashed. Well, here's another interesting thing about this ending sequence is yeah. that they tried to get Burke and Kimberly on the train at the same time. From the second From movie. From the second movie. Yeah, so that death gangster. would kill them all in one go on this yes. train. Um, but unfortunately those actors weren't available. And this film has like one of... It's one of the greatest DVDs for special features. Okay. That um, in, a, in a kind of choose your own fate... During this subway sequence, there's a homeless man mm -hmm. who has newspapers on him. And there's also a newspaper stand. And you can actually click with your remote on, on the newspaper mm. and it tells you that Kimberly and Officer Burke died in a wood chipper accident. <laughs> I mean this is all this is all non canon. Like did the wood chipper fall on them? No, or they them they, they, they would be that there was like a robbery going on or something and a car wedged them somewhere so that they had to jump out of like an emergency exit but there was a wood chipper running. So they both <laughs> just threw themselves into it by accident or I don't know, you can read though, it's like four pages of, of newspaper articles nice. explaining how they died. But yeah. like you know, for intent for the for the you know, the universe of Final Destination they're still alive. Because mm. these are just special features, what ifs. Yeah. And I also like there's like a you know, the whole thing is like choose your own fate. So it's like an interactive choose your own adventure story. Nice. Where right at the beginning when they do the head the, the toy costs mm -hmm. and you can just be like, Oh, I choose Tails this time and then they none of them actually go on the roller coaster at all. And nice. they all walk out. And then the credits roll. <laughs> you see, you end the film ten minutes in. I mean, it actually flashes up with bios about what happens to all the characters. Like one of them went off to fight the war in Iraq. One of them went and became a preacher. Nice. You know, it's just, like, okay. But the, the actual backstory that we should have had in the film, but right at yeah. the end. <laughs> but there's also like alternate death sequences as well. Like Frankie in the car, mm. um, they actually save his life, and so he doesn't die. Oh, okay. But then he gets arrested in a bar because he's, you know, he's filming women, you know, he's filming their underwear and stuff, and he gets arrested by an undercover cop. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> like, the girls in the in the tanning station, like, one of them actually manages to break free from her station. Nice. Then she opens up the case for the other one, grabs her, but because of the glass breaking, they end up both getting electrocuted instead. <laughs> It's like, okay, it's like just loads of what ifs and alternate things. But I'm like, that's great for a DVD. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's worth, it's worth you know, tracking it down just to watch those special features because you don't really get them now in like the streaming kind of digital age of film. I was going to say, it sounds like they put a lot of work into the special features yeah, they, more they, than they did the storyline of the film. Yeah, I, I'm guessing it kind of distracted them from what they were doing with the film. Yeah. Um, but uh, just one other bit of trivia for you that mm -hmm. I kind of, I liked the nod to yeah. being a fan of Space Above and Beyond is that uh, when when the train is, the roller coaster is about to go, everyone is inside chanting, hey, ho, let's go. <laughs> and uh, it was one of the great moments in the pilot episode of Space Above and Beyond where they're playing the Ramones. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, yeah. And also, uh, Kristen Cloak from Final Destination 1 is also the narrator of the Choose Your Own Fate because she actually married Glenn Morgan as well. Oh, so. Lucky bastard. <laughs> Well, Ian, after all of that, what's your favourite scenes? Uh, well, in fairness, just a lot of the deaths, really, I find are the most interesting thing about this movie. Like I said, I've, this is probably the third time I've watched it and I've realised now that none of the characters really have any backstory. I don't really care for any of them, but how they die is fun. I mean, the two blondes at the tannin booth... It plays on your mind of, hey, you know, these girls are bimbos and only care about how they look. So you don't really care if they live or die. And I'm like, well, I kind of do, you know, but watching the effect of their, like I said, the, their skin bubbling from how hot it is and the stuff around their eyes melting in. The, 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 the fairground ride, I thought was a lot bigger than what it was. It's not... It's it's impressive because it plays on your fear, your number one fear of going on a theme park ride and going, yeah, this is going to be fun. And then it getting caught upside down, you falling out, nothing you stopping you from hitting that floor. 
But then again, I mean, some of the CGI effects, I was like, not too great. And the fact that I didn't see half the people die uh, just made me, it, it makes me not want to get on a roller coaster. But, no, you know, at the same time, like Gary says, it's the safest fucking thing in the world. You've um, got more chance of slipping and killing yourself in your own shower. Yeah, in Final Destination world. Like, I like Frankie's death when that engine comes flying out and dispues his brain up. But, you know, I didn't really care for his character. So I was very surprised that his he had that much brain anyway. The, the train stuff at the end was cool. Like I said, uh, like you're setting up another premonition that, you know, he's going to be dragged all the way through that wall. Um, but one of the scenes I did actually really, really hate uh, wasn't actually anything in there. Tony Todd. Where was he? You know, we get his voice at the beginning telling us not that, you know, if you go on this ride, you're going to die, which I thought was cool. And I think he's the voice of the train conductor at the end. Yes. But nothing, you know, the, the morgue attendant is not there. And he's kind of integral to the story. You know, why wasn't a li why wasn't Wendy going to the, uh, or bumping into him with her camera, maybe taking his picture? That would have been cool. Maybe he should have been in the back of one of the pictures, but yeah, yeah no, the deaths really. Yeah, yeah, the deaths were, were creative and the special effects of the bodies exploding in gratuitous ways was, was, was good. Yeah. <laughs> I will say my, my favourite sequence um, was just an editing uh, thing that they did, which is when it went from the uh, the two tanning booths to the two coffins. <gasps> yeah. So that was a really good match cut. I really like that, yeah. Uh, very, very effective. But yeah, the uh, watching the girls screaming... You know, they're vulnerable, they're naked, they're on fire, they're burning, and the screams, oh. like, oh, it rings in your in your it ears. Um, that was that was, that was was nasty. Uh, I enjoyed the roller coaster sequence, but it was very short. Yeah. Like, it didn't give you... I mean, then again, the, the plane sequence was relatively short as well. Uh, the, the highway sequence just always sticks in your mind, mm -hmm. um, because that really, you know, it, it dragged it out. You were there, you witnessed the whole thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the roller coaster, it plays on your fears, but... Not not as much as as the previous installments, um, and of course I uh, I didn't really like the ending of this film. Um, I would have liked just the fairground, the camera taking a picture. You know, I like the idea of yeah. you know going and having that big explosive kind of finale. Did they live or don't they? I'm like, it's fine. Well, I like like you said. I, I kind of think the movies work better if they're left ambiguous at the end. Yes, yeah. You know, but, with... and this one still does. Yeah, yeah. But like, I think they all died naturally. It's quite likely, yeah. <laughs> well, Ian, do you recommend Final Destination 3? I do, but it's not the best one of the series at the moment. I mean, if you've gotten to this point, um, you know the formula. You know uh, the person's going to get the premonition right at the beginning, try and save some people. Is it seven? Is it always going to be seven? I don't know. I, 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 I start to write everybody down, and then they all start dying, and I give up. You know, but... It's it, it's cool. I really like the fact that it nods back to the first and second one, but same old, same old, really. Right, yeah. Um, I'm, you know, we're definitely in guilty pleasure territory now with mm. Final Destination 3. Uh, it does have its moments if you enjoyed, like, the Rube Goldberg-esque setups for the over-the-top deaths, as this is now what the franchise has been reduced to. <laughs> what the franchise? 90% <laughs> of the characters are very unlikable, and so you don't really care if they survive at all, and most of the dialogue is shallow and repetitive, with no character growth or exploration. Mary Elizabeth Winstead was fine in the leading role and did mm -hmm. a good job convincing me of like the trauma and the horror of the situation. She really gave you know those emotions. But the music by uh, Shirley Walker was again fantastic and the theme music has been refined and is fairly distinctive now. Mm. The gore is fantastic and everybody that dies does so in such an over-the-top fashion. It's laughable and it's entertaining. But... It's just not very filling, you know? Mm. It's junk food. Yeah. The foreshadowing is obnoxiously obvious and hard to miss, resulting in mostly predictable conclusions. It's guilty pleasure material, and there is fun to be had with this film, but it does feel like this franchise has fallen off the rails <laughs> into absurdity, and I wouldn't rush to rewatch it again. <laughs> But this ride isn't over yet as we race over into the final destination. <laughs>
Thanks for watching off the shelf reviews. <laughs>